Hi, it's Tom Gregory here, and welcome to this video about creating AWS CloudFormation resources with the service role. And in this video, we'll take a look at how to practice the principle of least privilege with CloudFormation, with a working example making use of the CloudFormation service role. This will allow the CloudFormation stack to make changes by assuming that role completely separately from the user or role that initiates the change in the first place. So let's get right into it. When we use CloudFormation templates to deploy resources into AWS, we do that using stacks. These are self-contained groupings of resources that can be created, updated, and deleted. When a stack is created, its permissions are by default defined by the role of the user that created it. For example, if I want to create a stack from a template that defines an S3 bucket, my user will have to have the S3 create bucket permission. This isn't always desirable if perhaps you want a user to be able to update a stack even if he doesn't have the permissions to update the resources in the stack himself. Fortunately, a stack has an I am role property which allows CloudFormation to assume a service role that grants specific permissions during the stack operation. This diagram gives an overview of how this works, with the CloudFormation stack having a very different set of permissions to the user who created the stack in the first place. Here's a working example that will show you how to create a stack with a service role. We'll see how that service role is then used to limit or extend what permissions the stack has beyond the permissions of the user creating the stack in the first place. We'll start by creating a user. In this example, we'll use this user to create our CloudFormation stack. Now we'll create an access key so we can configure access as this user from the API. The response will contain the access key and secret key. I'll use this information to run AWS configure and configure a new profile. Now we'll be able to append dash dash profile cloudformation dash user to any AWS CLI command to run the command as this user. We'll do that on any CloudFormation stack commands from this point onwards. Currently, this user can't do anything in AWS. Not very useful. Let's create a policy for this user which will allow them to create, describe, update and delete a CloudFormation stack, describe CloudFormation stack events so we can see what happens if things go wrong, pass a role to an AWS service in our case specifically to CloudFormation. Then we can run the following command to attach the policy to the CloudFormation user. Now let's create a file called stack.yaml which will contain the CloudFormation template which defines an S3 bucket resource. We can apply the stack using the CloudFormation user with a limited set of permissions. This will create the stack in AWS, which will automatically try to create the S3 bucket. To query the stack status, we'll run this command. Unfortunately, you'll see that there was a problem, and the stack is in the rollback complete status. To see what happened, we need to look at the individual events that happened to the stack. You can see here that we have a resource status, create failed, with the reason that access was denied to S3 create bucket. This is fair enough considering our CloudFormation user doesn't have this permission. We can now create a new service role with the S3 create bucket permission and assign it to our CloudFormation stack. We don't want to allow our CloudFormation user to directly create S3 buckets, but we're happy for S3 buckets to be created via CloudFormation stacks. We'll need to create a role for the CloudFormation service to assume. That role will need a policy with the S3 create bucket permission. It will need something called an assume role policy document which defines the trust relationship so that the CloudFormation service can assume this role. First off, let's create the assume role policy document. Next up, let's create a role passing the assume role policy document we just made. Now all that's left to do is to attach a policy to the role which gives the role the S3 create bucket permission. We'll also add S3 delete buckets so that I can clean up the stack later on. 
I'll attach it to the roll like this. Now it's time to pull all this together and create the stack again, but this time with a role which the CloudFormation service will assume to create the S3 bucket resource. Let's first delete the previous stack though. And now let's run the same create stack command, but this time with the role ARN parameter specified. We can check the stack status again, and this time it should be create complete. If we run AWS S3 LS, you can now see that the new bucket has been created. So you've now seen how you can use a CloudFormation service role to provide permissions to CloudFormation stack beyond those of the user that has created it. This can be particularly handy if, for example, you have a continuous integration or CI server that is creating or updating CloudFormation stacks. You can limit the permissions of the CI server to only create or update a stack, the stack itself will use a different role giving it the permissions to create whatever resources it needs to. Thanks for watching and if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos coming soon. See you next time on Tom Gregory Tech.